Flat Earthers are constantly trying to tell us what's what when it comes to the shape of the Earth. And that often involves quite a large amount of physics. They act as if they know all there is to know about the subject. And this got me thinking, how much do they really know? Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and attainable. Encrypting all internet traffic sent to and from your devices and ensuring that your IP address remains hidden to make sure no one can see what you do online. On top of that, they block ads, trackers, malware and phishing attempts and unlike other VPN services, you can use it on as many devices as you like simultaneously. As you all know guys, doing this job, I spend between six and eight hours a day online. The internet knows a lot about us, which is why we should care about our online data as well as our ID as well. ID theft is an increasingly common and scary crime. Use Surfshock and its Hacklock system to get alerts anytime your email address or password is compromised. Hacklock scans various databases of leaked information and notifies its users if their data is found so they can take action. Click on the link in the description or go to surfshark.deal slash simandan and use my code simandan to get a whopping 83% off and three months extra free. Right, back to today's video where we're thinking about just how much flat earthers know about physics. You'd like to think that it would be some kind of prerequisite to know at least some basic physics if you're trying to convince people that the earth isn't a sphere. Right? Well, this got me thinking, so I decided to send a GCSE Foundation Physics question to nine of the biggest flat earthers. GCSEs, by the way, are the final exams that you sit at the end of your school life here in the UK when you're around 15, 16 years old. The Foundation tier is for those who aren't expected to achieve higher grades. So let's get this straight. We are talking here about basic physics questions. These should be easy for flat earthers who are trying to teach other people about earth and by extension physics. Now, six of the flat earthers did actually respond, believe it or not, but did they get any of the questions right? Let's find out. We'll start with the three that didn't reply and we'll answer the questions for them as well. Okay, first up is Bob from Globebusters. A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks Bob, but now is not the time. I sent Bob this question. Hi Bob, water at the bottom of a container exerts a force of 27 newtons. The cross-sectional area of the bottom of the container is 0.009 meters squared. Calculate the pressure exerted by the water on the bottom of the container. You have 24 hours. I gave them all a 24 hour time limit by the way, makes it more interesting. So Bob unfortunately didn't reply to this, so we'll help him out as this clearly was a bit too testing for him. Now, pressure of course is force divided by area, so if we get our figure of 27 newtons and divide that by 0.009 meters squared, we get an answer of 3000. And since pressure is measured in pascals, the answer should be 3000 pascals. A 15 degree per hour drift. No, Bob, not 15, 3000. Moving on, the next flat earther that didn't respond was Mr. Mark Sargent. Here is the GCSE physics question that I sent him. Hi, Mark. What is one astronomical unit? You have 24 hours. Now, Mark, of course, as I said, didn't respond to this one. Was that because he didn't know the answer or was he just ignoring me? Who knows, but all the same, we're gonna help him out on this one. This one is a bit of an easy one, Mark. One astronomical unit, or one AU, is a unit of distance used in astronomy that is equal to approximately 150 million kilometers, which is the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. But I'm sure you already knew that, Mark, hey. And the final flat earther who failed to respond to me was Mr. Eric DeBay. Here is his question. Hi, Eric. Write down the equation that links gravitational field strength, gravitational potential energy, height, and mass. You have 24 hours. Now, again, did Eric even see this message or was he ignoring it because he didn't know the answer? Just for you, Eric, here's the answer to this particular GCSE question. Gravitational potential energy equals mass multiplied by gravitational field strength multiplied by height. 
but I'm sure you already knew that, Eric. Now, onto the six flat earthers who did actually respond. And of those six, only one of those flat earthers had a genuine attempt at the GCSE question. So the first person to respond was Mr. Quantum Eraser. Here is his question. Hi John, a crate on a crane weighs 11,500 newtons and is lifted vertically 2.60 meters. Calculate the work done to lift the crate. You have 24 hours. Now, Quantum Eraser claims that he's a man of science and is constantly berating others who he thinks aren't using science correctly. This GCSE physics question should be a cinch for him then, shouldn't it? This was his response. Piss off, booger eater. You can't recover, son. You have 24 hours. Oh, maybe not then, QE. Well, for clarity, here is the answer to this question, son. Now, work done is, of course, force multiplied by distance. So we just need to multiply 11,500 newtons by 2.6 meters, and we get 29,900. And of course, work done is a form of energy, so that would be 29,900 joules. But I'm sure you already knew that, son. After QE, I decided to ask his partner in crime, Nathan Oakley, a question. His response was not what I was hoping for, but here is his question. Hi Nathan, a student measured the frequency of a water wave as 5 hertz. Calculate the period of the water waves. You have 24 hours. I mean, this one should be a piece of cake for Nathan. But instead of answering the question, he sent me back this. Dear globe worshipping <laughs> measure R, you have the rest of your natural born life. Good luck with that. My question will change your world. I ask it daily, along with a few others you can't answer. Is there just wrong your final answer on to lot versus space, or did you need another lifeline? Nope, no lifelines required from me, Nathan, especially when the questions that you ask on your daily debate show, like, is space real and stuff like that. So just for you, Nathan, here is the answer to your question. Of course, the period of a wave is defined as one divided by the frequency, which in our question here is five hertz. So one divided by five gives us 0 0.2, and the unit is seconds, so our answer is 0 0.2 seconds. But I'm sure you already knew that, Nathan. Well, the Flat Earthers aren't really given a good show of themselves at the moment, are they? Let's remember that these are the guys who think they know everything about physics and therefore are correct on the shape of the Earth. Moving on, the next question I sent was for David Weiss of the channel DITRH. Here is his question. Hi David, a car has a mass of 750 kilograms. How is the kinetic energy of the car calculated when the car is traveling at eight meters per second? You have 24 hours. Hoping that David could answer a relatively simple kinetic energy question, he instead sends me back this. Why don't you come on a show with us live and let's talk globe earth proofs. You have 24 hours. Don't bother responding other than to accept this offer. And of course I responded with this. Does that mean you don't know the kinetic energy in relation to the question? A yes or no will be fine, thanks. And David did not respond, so I can only assume he didn't know the answer. Not to worry matey, that is what I am here for. So kinetic energy is of course calculated using the equation half multiplied by mass multiplied by the velocity squared, which would be half multiplied by 750 multiplied by eight squared, which gives us a total of 24,000 joules. Hope that clears things up for you, David, and I look forward to getting to your email of thanks. Okay, our next flat earther to receive a GCSE physics question is none other than Level Earth Observer. Now he constantly gets things wrong on his channel, I wonder if he can get this right. Let's find out. So I sent Level Observer this. Hi Elio, the speed of a wave is calculated using the following equation, wave speed equals frequency times wavelength. Water waves in a ripple tank have a wavelength of 1.2 centimeters and a frequency of 18.5 hertz. How does the speed of these water waves compare to the typical speed of a person walking? You have 24 hours. Hoping for some sort of response, it seemed that Elio thought that this question was a tad too hard for him as he sent this back. Did you bang your head? Not even an attempt. Disappointing Elio. So as the question states, wave speed is frequency times wavelength. And we know both, so 1.2 centimeters multiplied by 18.5 hertz is 22.2 centimeters per second. This is 0.22 meters per second, and the average person's walking speed is about 1.4 meters per second. So there we go, buddy. Hope that makes sense. Moving on, the next person I sent a GCSE physics questions to is 
Jerinism. Now he was the person who famously did this. We have a backup experiment. If you're seeing through this hole, through the next hole, and seeing the light at the backboard, or at 17 feet off the water, the earth is flat. If he's holding it up at 23 feet high and we're seeing the light, well, that's because the earth's curved. So I, I should only be able to see it when it's at 17 feet. Okay, go ahead and drive down there, Enrique. You're gonna hold the light there. Enrique, how high is your light? 17 feet. I mean, I, you know, it's his, um, there's, we don't see you, Enrique. Lift up your, lift up your light way above your head. Interesting. And for his question, he received this. Hi, Jaron. Write down the equation which links frequency, wavelength, and wave speed. You have 24 hours. I know what you're all thinking. This is similar to Elio's question I did just a minute ago. And as I stated, wave speed is wavelength multiplied by frequency. That's it. That's the answer. It's what we would call a banker, one of the easiest questions in the paper. Surely for a man that knows so much about physics, this should be easy. This was Jaron's response. No idea what you mean. I don't care what the equation is. Not even sure that they're connected. Speed of sound has nothing to do with frequency. Wow, you probably couldn't get more wrong in that sentence. So there may be an equation, but I don't know, don't care. Don't give me some time limit either, clown. Who is the next man's name you're having tattooed on your arm? And can you name other men, straight men, who have men's names tattooed on them? I can only think of religious people with their Jesus tattoos or crucifix, but you have men's names you never met. Just wondering if your wife knows, and if she does, do you have to carry her purse? You have 44 minutes, Jaron. Okay, a very spiky reply there from Jaron with some very homophobic undertones. That's a real shame, but I don't think I need to say much more here because you've exposed yourself gloriously, Jaron. Thank you. And finally, we move on to our last flat earther where a genuine attempt to answer the question was given. It's from Matt Long of the channel Woke Town and of course the Flat Earth podcast. As a reminder, he said stuff like this before. Now, one of the things you'll never hear a tennis player talk about having to adjust for is the spin of the earth. And this. So here's our tennis court. And as the earth spins towards the east, you can obviously see how compared to the center of the court, one side goes down and one side goes up. So he fancies himself as a bit of a scientist. This was his question. Hi Matt, during a car journey, the car accelerates from nine meters per second to 18 meters per second in six seconds. Calculate the acceleration of the car. You have 24 hours. Now, this is possibly a bit tricky, so I was wondering what I'd get back. This was his response. I wouldn't think you would be reaching out for me for math help. And I, of course, replied saying, humor me. Now, before we check his answer, let's check and see how we solve this one. So acceleration is defined as the change in velocity divided by the time taken, which means the acceleration would be nine divided by six, which is 1.5 meters per second squared. This was Matt's response. 3 over 2. Now, technically, he does have the correct maths. The answer is 1.5, which is 3 over 2. But he failed to include the units. So well done, Matt, for actually answering the question. Now, I could be doubtful here and say that he Googled it, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I don't understand why the others couldn't at least give some serious thought to their questions. We know why, though, don't we? Pretty much every single flat earther out there, and Matt Long, I'm currently not including you in this, knows absolutely nothing about physics. Yet they sit there and expect people to listen to them and believe them regarding the shape of the Earth, Earth's rotation, and how space can't exist because of thermodynamics. They wax lyrical about optical physics and Coriolis. They speak about drift and gyroscopes and curvature and space travel. Yet on the whole, they can't answer some simple physics questions designed for 15, 16 year olds. So here is a challenge and it goes for any flat earther out there. If you can sit and pass a GCSE foundation physics paper, then I will no longer include your channel or you in any Flat Earth Friday material ever again. That's it, I'll leave you alone. And not only that, I'll advise other flat earth debunkers to leave you alone as well. Plus, I'll publicly congratulate you as someone who understands physics and science. So there we go. Roll up, roll up, come and have a go, if you dare. Of course, no one will. But just in case, my email is simandan at gmail.com. 
get in touch. Well, there we go. Another Flat Earth Friday done and dusted. What an enjoyable one. That was really like setting it up as well. If you enjoyed it today, then please, please do like the video and subscribe as well if the feeling takes you. Just enough time to once again thank Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Remember, click the link in the description or go to surfshark.deals slash simandan and use my code simandan to get 83% off and three months extra free. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend and I'll see you on Tuesday for more tin for fun. See you then.